Welcome to this session of OpenMentor.net. The last session we talked about how to create workspace, project and a script, how to replay that. In this session we are going to see the different components of the script. If you see here, there is a left hand side. This is the navigator panel where you could see the recorded session, then the script, then this particular result. Now this is the test. If you see here, this is the page. For the page, this is the test, this is the page. For the first page, it is displaying the URL. Then it says there is a thing called the think time. Okay. Think time meaning the time between firing this request and the next request. Now, since this is the very first request, the think time is zero. Whereas if you go to the subsequent pages, you will see think time with a different, this is 11,000 milliseconds, which is 11 seconds. So while recording, users will take some time from this page to this page, then this page to this page, from this page to this page. So before firing this request, it will wait for 5513 milliseconds because every human being takes some time to read the page content, type data, and then react while recording he notes down that information he keeps that as a think time you can go ahead and then change that to say 5000 milliseconds you can change it and then save it absolutely no harm but do not make it zero and think time can be in seconds milliseconds minutes and hours also now this is page one in this page one what we need to look at here is if you expand this tree you could see the URL then if you expand that there is a response okay so you could see the URL somewhere you could see this dark purple color somewhere you will see uh, the lighter purple color right the darker ones are the primary requests okay the secondary ones are coming like a CSS file or JS file they are all coming in a lighter shade this is in bold and <coughs> if you see here some of the data that you are looking at here, they are also appearing. I selected items that appears here in green color. I selected something over here. Okay. It also appears in green color. So this is usually any data that you supply, which can come from, there is a concept called data pool. They are all coming in green. At this point of time, you can note down anything which is done in auto correlation. It will come in purple color. But before that, we need to understand one important aspect. In every page, you select a request. Okay, It shows what was the response. If you select the request, at the bottom, under the protocol tab, if you select request, it will show the request data. The HTTP protocol can use GET request, POST request, and the AJAX request. So this is how exactly how the request went from the browser. The response will always have a response header and the body. Okay, This is the response header. This is the response body that it got. Since this is a redirect turn 302 response, HTTP 200 means success, 300 series meaning redirection. So since it is 300, there is no content. Whereas if you go to this one, the next one, you have a request. Then you have the response header came in as, uh, given as 200 it came in from the server and the response content is 1141 bytes and the total response is given over here and how it in the browser if you click on the browser tab it will show how it looked on the browser this is same the response content is same as right click users on your browser this is the same thing so every single thing you can select that particular request and then see what is the request what is the response header what is the response content okay so if at all you have some doubt on what has gone to the server what has come back from the server select request by request and then expand it it will say what is the response code 200 meaning success 300 meaning redirection 400 is users or connection errors 500 series browser errors this is the first step so you need to understand what request went in this is a typical request structure okay get accept refer this is the syntax he is using you are not supposed to change any of these things okay so once you understand the request structure 
now select the request you could see what was the primary request what is the data that went along with that request so if you select this page in this page I have given the username value as eAdmin password as 123 and then it shows this is the re request that you have sent it okay everywhere where you sent some data he will also show what was the response okay I go to this page there is a parameter that went as masters items so we sent this is called a query string this is the URL question mark masters equal to items so I sent items because I clicked the items menu it went as a uh, data okay so for every request you will see the URL you will see what data it went okay. it, it carried through it then the the primary request you will see in bold color the secondary ones will be in in lighter purple color or lighter or uh, black and white this is the last page the last page also had a lot of uh, this is the logout that we have done is and this is the URL this is the thing time. everywhere you select the page you could see the think time you could see the uh, test data you could see the URL you can change this page titles also no harm absolutely no harm I hope this is clear to you all this is the fundamental of understanding what is the page level what is the individual level request within the page what all the responses within the request what is the request what is the response header what is the response content how it looked on the browser okay now more than anything else what we want to do is we want to this is like one user you can collapse this tree if you run this this will run as one single user but what I am interested in is running it as multiple users if I want to run multiple users all I need to do is file new performance schedule okay create a performance schedule I give a name right uh, run uh, five users okay I create this name then I say next it says initial number of users okay right now I'm taking as all our five users I click finish okay now this is the different window remember all are appearing on the same panel but this is one tab this is our test tab okay you see the test steps right here once you create a schedule schedule appears in a separate tab the schedule name appears here we gave five users it will run what is the duration as long as the script runs it will run okay now it automatically creates one user group underneath that what I'm going to do is right now I'm not going to go in detail about that but right now I am having one group I am allocating 100% of the five users to this now select that click add okay there are two things add and insert okay when you say add it will add a new child object now I have selected this I click add it has it says add a test you can add multiple things now I'm adding a test when I say test it shows me the project I choose the test that I have created the test is added underneath it so if you effectively look here I created a schedule allocated five users this evaluation copy can run five users underneath that I have created one user group with hundred percent allocation of all the users then underneath that group I added a test that's it now I want to run five users it's very simple select that this one okay you select that pull this run as performance schedule okay run for users has been modified save changes yes now what you are going to see here you will not see a browser right here but what you will see is it will launch five users in the background okay it will not open up five browsers you will see five users getting launched in the background the request will be sent to the server that is invisible to you your normal eyes if you see the traffic you can understand uh, the web traffic you can understand the five users are running but you can see it from the live monitors which is given by RPT over the screen right now it is launching okay it will take a few minutes first time when you run it will take a few minutes then it will start running it says running if you look at the summary look here there are five users active users are five none is completed they are all running 
every 5 seconds it will refresh. The requests are being fired. You could see here the response times changing. Okay, Now 5 users are completed. How do we know that 5 users are done or not? Right now we are doing logging. Go to the screen and then log out. We are not adding data. I will show you very clearly when we add multiple data. When 5 users are running, it will add more data. So initially 5 users were active. Now 5 users were completed. Okay. It says so many pages were visited. You could see that information. Again, I am coming to the analysis in detail at a later point of time. So to run a test with multiple users, if you want to run a test with one user, record the script, run, from, run as a script. If you run it for multiple users, create a performance schedule, create a user group, underneath that user group pull the test, allocate the number of users over here, then run. Once you run, it will produce the results, it will give you the overall performance. Initially, it will be initializing the generator, it will be running the users, then it will collect the details of the results, then it will come to the complete state. How exactly these runs, these users are running, what is the proof of that these users are running, this can be verified when we add data. For example, if 10 users are adding one one item, at the end of the run, I will be expecting 10 items to be added. I will show that probably in subsequent sessions. So in this session, we learnt about how to pull, what, what all the details in the test script, the pages, the individual request responses, request response headers, body, think time, then how the user data is transferred along with the request. Then we pull the script into the scheduler. In the schedule, we added a user group. Then we pulled the test. We added the test underneath that user group. We allocated X number of users. We ran. That's what we have seen. With that, we will stop this session. We will meet in the subsequent session. Thank you.